Okay, okay, okay. We are live right now. Live from the village right now. It is three minutes past 8 p.m. right now on the 27th of September 2021. Right now, we're in London. Well, I'm in London, England right now. I don't know where you are at right now, but let me know where you are at right now in this world right now. We're about to watch Attack the Block on Movie Night right now. Wagwan, people. Wagwan, okay. So, yeah, Movie Night, fam. Okay, uh, Attack the Block. I've seen Attack the Block before. I've seen it quite a few times before, actually. I think I've seen it at least three times before. I think at least three times that I can think of. Maybe more than that. But it's a great movie. I, I like this movie a lot. came out in 2012. It is rated 15, which means you have to be 15 or older to watch this movie. If you are under 15, then you should not be watching this movie. Um, I'm not sure how they check, <laughs> but hey, you should be watching this movie if you're under 15. But anyway, anyway, it's only an hour 27 minutes. It's not a long film. This is John Boyega before he did Star Wars, so before Star Wars fame. Before all that, he was already fighting aliens from outer space and attacked the block where he was defending his ends. Um, but this film was directed by uh, is it Joe Cornish. Um, it also features, uh, you know what, my microphone is peaking. Let me turn this down a bit. There we go. Uh, it also features Nick Frost, um, who you might know from the uh, uh, what they call the Cornetto movies. They called uh, you know the ones with um, uh, Simon Pegg. So he did uh, Shaun of the Dead, uh, Hot Fuzz, a few others. The names can't remember right now, but you know they're they're pretty cool. Well, the ones I've seen are pretty cool. Big up Sam in the house. My current location is Saturn. Needed a holiday from this planet. Oh, I hear that. I hear that. And Saturn ain't afraid to put a ring on it as well. So, uh, <laughs> Saturn's not afraid of commitment. <laughs> so, uh, I hear that. I hear that. How you doing, Sam? Big up, Sam, for coming through. Big up to you and your crew. Sam, all the way from Saturn. Uh, but... Who else? Oh yeah, um, Joe Jodie For Jodie Foster is that it? Jodie Foster's in this movie as well. Before she did Doctor Who, so yeah, quite a few um, quite a few names in well, quite a few uh, names that you might know in this movie. Uh, but yeah, I've seen it a few times before. I like this film. I'm about to watch it one more time. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Attack the Block on Netflix. If you got Netflix, you can watch it along. If you don't, you can still come along and have some fun. But if you get it ready on zero, and I'll let y'all know when to press the play button. But we got Sam in the house. Big up Sam all day, every day. Have you finished? Um, uh, have you got? Have you? Ah, uh, 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 a, 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 a typical yet? Because mate, mate, you recommended me that show. And I watched a little bit of it, and then I ended up watching all of it. <laughs> I was like, "Damn, this is a good show." Yes, yeah, binged it at the weekend. Awesome! All right, so before uh, anybody comes in with the spoilers and stuff, or anybody who hasn't seen it, we're gonna spoil it for a second. Um, if you if you if you're watching a replay, then just skip ahead of the spoiler bit. <laughs> but yeah, the way that ended, I mean, I don't know if they're gonna do a fifth season, but the way I see, it, if they don't do a fifth season, it was just a. It, it, I, I don't I don't see how you could have ended it any better than that. I I, I thought the ending was just just spot on. So yeah, that whole journey from one to season one to three, uh, two, three, and four, the whole journey of uh, Sam and everything he goes through and his family and what they go through and his friends and what they go through. And, you know, it's it's funny, it's it's insightful, um, it's, it's so many things. And yeah, big up for that recommendation. I really, really like that show. So. Uh, Mars is next to my list. Uh, that viral infection is spreading through my household. Oof, oof. Damn, I'm sorry to hear that, man. That sucks. Everybody getting sick. Gats to be careful out there, man. Gats to be careful. But Mars in Roman mythology was the god of war. 
So uh, I don't know if that's such a good place to go to. It might, it might not be very, um, it might not be very hospitable there. You know, it might be a little bit hostile. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, the ending. Oh my god, got me right. Oh, for real, for real. When he was uh, having the dreams as well with the numbers at 53 or 54, he's just having a dream about the number when he's seeing his friend, and then he realizes because he hadn't taken the holidays, and then he was like. Yeah, can I go with you to the Antarctica? And that whole thing about going to the Antarctica and how that almost never happened. Ah, oh, man. It was, um, yeah, it, it was something, man. It was something. It was just such a... Do you know what I really liked about it, and I've kind of said this before, but it's, it's worth repeating. What I really liked about the show is that it wasn't just about Sam. Because they could have just made a show just about Sam, right? They could have done that and it would have been fine. But it wasn't just about Sam. It was like him and then everything else that goes on around and how other people's lives, what's going on in their lives. And because he's, you know, just kind of, <laughs> to, to a lack of a better way to describe it, he's kind of in his own world a little bit, you know. But you see, because we're seeing everything else and how it all interacts and then how he's trying to, and, and how it all trying to deal with uh, him and his uh, condition and, it, and the way it all just kind of comes. And then, uh, what was his friend's name again? Um... I can't remember his friend, the one that works at the uh, the same shop as him. Um, but that part where he had to choose between grassing up his friend's girlfriend and um, uh, just you know keeping quiet about it because he because he asked him to, and he you know he grassed her up and he just, he kind of felt like you know what we're we're not friends anymore. And I was like, bro, I, I felt that man because on one hand it's like. I, you know, you get it that, you know, he's autistic and, you know, he's, he's doing things like, you know, according to how he sees things and how it should be and the rules and everything else. But he kind of see it from, you know, his friend's point of view where it's like, you know, I just need you to do this one thing for me, you know, and it's, and now that's, that, that whole heartbreaking, but I like how they got back together though. Even it was a bit, um, it was a bit, it was a bit eccentric, but still, it was pretty cool. I felt, I kind of felt their characters, you know, when they went to, uh, was it Vegas, and they had like the, I think it was the, um, the Elvis Presley homie of them. <laughs> that was brilliant, man. Uh, Sam and Paige, the most romantic breakup ever. Yeah, did they get back together? Um, I think they got back together, didn't they? Because they broke up. I'm sure they got back together, or didn't they? I don't remember anymore. I might have to watch it again. Damn, I've forgotten already. But I remember they breaking up. And then they got back together, then they broke up again. And then, oh man, I might have to watch it again. But I'm, I'm sure they broke up at least, I got back to, I think they broke up at least twice. I just can't remember if they actually got back together twice. Because they broke up a little bit in the beginning, and then it, I think later on they got back together, and I fit. oh man. Damn, damn, damn. The book. Oh, yes, that's right. Yes, 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 Because he was um going to take an. I think he was going to college. Well, he was going to college, and yeah, she was taking an opportunity. I kind of felt for Paige as well. Like you know how she, you know, was kind of a student who was doing everything right. You know, or getting all the good grades and everything else, and doing all the things she's supposed to. Things that didn't quite work out for her because. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I feel like I, I feel like I feel like that sometimes. Where just you know, sometimes you're just doing all that you can do, as it just still feels like things just don't go the way you need them to. So I was like, man, when I seen her go for it, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, can, I feel like I can understand that feeling. Oof. But I think there's just a lot of re relatability, just a lot across all the characters. I think at some points they're all doing things that we could all kind of relate to at, on some level, and you know, even um. Like when the wife um, was being unfaithful and it's like not to justify it, but then, you know, you kind of understand how she got there as well. And it's like, oh, you know, but then they get back together and then <laughs> the other lady's kissing him and it's like, he has to, he has to come on it, be honest about it. So, yeah, it was just uh, oh, the journey, man, the journey. It was just... Good show, man. It was a quality, quality show. Can't believe I didn't even. Cause I don't even think I even heard of that before you mentioned it to me. Like, I, cause some, and I was telling a, a friend about it, 
that I was, I was watching it and that was recommended to me and he was like oh yeah it's a great show and because he, he'd watched it already and I'm like man how did this escape my radar like how did I mean I guess to be fair I mostly watch like sci-fi and <laughs> you know action movies and stuff like that so maybe maybe Netflix figured nah you won't be interested in this nah, you, you, you won't be interested in something like this I don't know it was just Here's a, here's a Marvel movie you can watch. You don't, you don't be interested in this. <laughs> but yeah, that was definitely um big, man. It's big. It was big. It was big. I really, really liked it. But here's something else where I like. Attack the Block. Have you seen Attack the Block before? thing man needs to do on this thing all right i'll trust that out a bit uh i cried when uh the dude got oh yeah on the testes as well uh what was his name again sent no i've forgotten his name but it works in the techtropolis together and oh they're boss as well bob <laughs> was so oblivious to the fact that his wife was banging another dude like bro come on man can't remember saying but it rings a bell oh wow well if you've not seen attack the block before i'm gonna say that you are in for a treat if you have seen attack but before uh, anybody who's watching who has seen it before then you already know but yeah it's a great movie it's a great movie we're gonna start uh, press playing a little bit I want to get Reddit on zero. It's not very long. It's only an hour 27 minutes. So, uh, yeah, not a long one. But still, it's a good one. Braxton Sp Spivey. No. Spivey? Yeah, Braxton Spivey. What up, Brax? <laughs> Ninja from Louisiana. Wagwan. How you doing, Brax? Are you good? We're doing movie night tonight. We're about to watch Attack the Block on Netflix. If you've got Netflix, then yeah, you can get it set up on zero for Attack the Block 2011 movie by Joe Cornish. If you don't have Netflix or any other way you can watch it along, it's all good. We can still have some fun. We can still have some fun. But yeah, Attack the Block 2011, Netflix. I don't know if it's on other streaming platforms, but it is on Netflix. And I guess I'm all right. And you, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I was out today. I actually got um uh, a new car. Well, not really new car. It's rented. Um, but I wasn't able to do. I normally do like cab driving stuff, like Uber and you know that whole thing. And I haven't been able to do it for a while just because of uh had to get my car relicensed and there was some issues with that. And eventually, I ended up having to sell my car because um, the cost to, of getting it ready and licensed for the road would have been—I just felt was a bit too much. So I sold the car. Um, that's all done. And then just today, picked up another car, uh, a rented car, just for the time being. And it's pretty cool. So it's fully electric. It's fully one of the fully electric cars. Um, so it's like real smooth, real quiet, all that sort of stuff, you know efficiency all that you know buttons everywhere it's pretty cool been driving around a little bit today uh but yeah i'm doing okay i'm doing okay how's you man how's everybody how's your day going how's your day been how's your day going we're just talking about uh we're about to start attack the block in a little bit, but also just talking a little bit about a a typical, which is a show on Netflix, a, a, a series on Netflix. If you've seen it, then you already know. If you haven't seen it, then that is recommended. That is recommended. It's called a typical on Netflix. It's four seasons, and it is. 
I got Fire Stick Cinema, Unlock My TV. Oh, Fire Stick, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing that you plug into the back of your TV, and yeah, 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 yeah. I guess ya, I guess ya. Cool, cool, cool. Ah. You picked up a car. I picked up the kids' viral infection. Doesn't seem fair. Oh. Oh. Hope you feel better soon, Sam. Hope the kids feel better too. Whatever, whatever they got. Hopefully, it's <laughs> nothing bad. Well, I mean, it's bad because it's a viral infection, but you know. <laughs> Oof. Man, it's um, what is it now? It's September. Somebody, I saw something on um, I can't remember where I saw it, but they were talking about how the fact that a lot of us have been sort of indoors the past sort of eighteen months or so, that you know we haven't really been exposed to you know just general sort of diseases and you know illnesses and things like that outside of coronavirus but just the general sort of normal stuff and now that people are coming back out and i guess especially as the temperature you know drops a little bit as we approach sort of autumn into going into winter um yeah sort of things like colds and flus you know i guess about to start become a bit more commonplace as well yeah no we picked up everything 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 man oof oof we got the um i guess they're dealing with it all over the uk as well but we got the uh uh the traffic has been pretty bad because like a lot of people are buying the petrol so I'm glad the car that I got is fully electric. I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> a lot of people are buying petrol, and anytime you get near to a petrol station, you just see like there. It's always like blocked up on the roads. Like when I was driving back from the uh, when the place I got the car, I was driving back and it's passed a few petrol stations along the way, and it was like just blocked, 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 blocked. Like bruh. So it has been off school for over a week with it. Oof. Be well, Sophie, man. Be well. That's tough. Oh. Was it like the flu? What did she got? What's happening? Hopefully it's, hopefully, hopefully it's not that corona. But yeah, man. This, um, uh, this country. But hey. We're going to have some fun today. We're going to have some fun. So if y'all ready, I'm going to switch over to this screen so y'all can see what I can see. Let me put this thing up, actually. That's the wrong one. Okay, let me put the right thing up because that's just looking real awkward right now. Where's it gone? I did actually make the right one somewhere. There we go. There we go. All right, so if y'all ready, I'ma press play. I'm gonna do a countdown. Um, three, two, one, then play. So three, two, one, play. It don't matter if it's not super accurate. It's all good. Uh, so it's been let's go for it. Oh, I when I get a truck, it'll be a Nissan Toyota or a Mazda. I drove a drove a Toyota for a while. They, those are good cars. Uh, my dad used to drive a Nissan back in the day, and that was a pretty good car as well. Uh, Mazda, I can't speak on, but Nissan and Toyota, yeah, yeah. The Toyota I had that that served me pretty well. She has had a bad chest and a nasty cough, and now it's not COVID, it's uh, just a viral infection. Oh, okay. That's uh, something, at least it's not that, but yeah, still, ain't nice, man, to go through any kind of infection. Uh, 
especially when, especially when you're young as well. It's just like because you get the, you can't really play it. The only thing like you can't go out and play with it with all the other kids. You can't have ice cream for a while, man. It's just hard, man. This film is filmed and set, well, set and filmed in London. Oval Station is, uh, I think that's Kennington area. So not quite central London, but qu close to central London. But Oval is where they do cricket and that whole thing. But yeah, there's Doctor Who. Doctor Who before she was the Doctor. A typical night in the ends. Biggs. She doesn't play outside with kids anyway. She isn't mentally mature enough. Uh, oh wait, we're still three years poorly. She's really sensory. Uh, she could be hard work. Oh, doesn't play outside. Mm. Not mentally. Okay, may maybe next year then. <laughs> or not, or not. <laughs> As she pleases, Queen Sophie. Getting robbed. Doctor Who got robbed. She may be eight, but mentally she's younger. Mm. But what's um how 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 do they what am I trying to say like what's the men what's their age like mentally like that we saw like four five or how, how's how's how do they rate that? Yeah, so before Finn was uh, defending the galaxies, he was defending Earth. They don't, uh, she's just the way she is. Okay, fair enough. And I am everything you say I am. And I am whatever you say I am. Right. 
Back me, back me. Yeah, I love this. Like, they don't really know what they found. No, that is. Tell you what that is. That's an alien, bro. Believe it. Must have come from outer space trying to take over Earth, innit? When it landed in the wrong place, though, you get the wrong place. <laughs> Welcome to London, motherfucker. Welcome to the end, brother. This is the block fact. Nobody fucks with a block. You get the B L O C K. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, London represent. <laughs> By the way, this is this is pretty much, and this is this is 2011, but this is pretty much how people talk in London till this day. Like this is even before this was made. This is just people how how a lot of people were talking. And if you come down to London, this is pretty accurate. So beloved, you call her Queen Sophie. Uh, she calls herself Queen of England. <laughs> Can't wait for Liz to peg it so she can rule solo. <laughs> hey, the royal family live a long time, man. Hey, she might be waiting a while. She might be waiting a while. I mean, her husband uh, was it Prince Philip. He's uh, he's departed, but but royals live a long time, and women tend to live longer than men anyway. So yeah, I think it could be a while before uh, Queen Sophie uh, takes the throne. It could be it could be a good while yet, but hey. Not really. Has my back in. Yeah, she was a bit timid before she became the doctor. Chicken world, big up chicken world. <laughs> that If she rules, I'm going into witness protection. <laughs> well, if uh, if she becomes queen, I don't, I don't, I don't need much. I'm not greedy, but you know, maybe, uh, maybe a couple of mansions. You know, a couple of mansions, a few Ferraris. I I'm not greedy. You know, maybe uh, maybe a couple of Rolls Royces. I'm I'm not greedy. I'm, I don't I don't need much. Gold lift. Chlamydia, you know. Yeah. And did that to your face? Yeah. So you killed it? Yeah. Such a bad Why is she mad that you killed it though? It's like they fell out the sky, it's scratch up his face. What do you want him to do? <laughs> what do you want men to do? Just like, oh yeah, pat it on the head? It's like, nah, it's like.
Ah, oh, these kids. <clears throat> mayhem and props. Big man thing. Oof. <laughs> it's funny that sometimes she uh, hates me, but last night she went to bed crying because Holly said she was going to rip my face off. Uh, she can never hate you, I'm sure. I mean, I guess, uh, I guess, uh, I guess, uh, I don't really get to talk too much about these things, but I don't know from, from where I said, just, it seems like relationship with like kids and parents could be tough at any times and how f things seem at one moment aren't necessarily how they actually are. So, uh, you know, people say things they don't mean and. While this is going on, something else is going on. All kinds of things are going on. Chasing when she doesn't get away, get her own way. Uh, everything is her uh, Sophie's way. That's part of uh, autism, but I can't always uh, let her get away because it ain't right. Mm. Indeed, and it's just not the way life goes, <laughs> you know. Unfortunately, it's just that's the way life goes. Sometimes you just gotta concede. You discovered a species hitherto unknown to science, quite possibly non terrestrial in origin. He kicked his fucking head in. Take a seat, I'll be back. We're getting ripped from that. We discovered it. Ebay fans, <laughs> alert the media, exclusive rights to the highest bidder. The sun fam, something is anything. No, 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 the sun will stretch it up like one of those page three girls, bro. I want to call the Guardian, lad. If it's a proper paper, then people will believe it. Our tabloids pay more money, bro. Can't call the paper, <laughs> FBI will confiscate your offer. FBI? This is England, fam. Not FBI. FBI. It's in six or so <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Pick your battles. Oh, indeed, indeed. Indeed. It's uh, advice for just. Just advice for life. It's like, um, you know, you're never going to get. Not, not everything's always going to go the way you want them to go. And knowing when to just say, hey, you know what? This one I can let go. Or this one, I gotta stick to my guns. Very reliable customer. Ronnie. I Hi hats. Oh, about to meet big man. Get that switch. Get the shot. Don't give a fuck. 
That guy looks like um I don't think it is. It's not. But he kinda looks like um Chunks. Up in the drug game. She releases a pheromone which can be detected by the male of the species from over a mile. Oi, Get that snitch. Get the strap. Don't give a fuck. Blah, blah, blah. Have you watched any Buffett? Yeah, I did actually. I've watched the first couple of episodes so far. And it's alright. It's alright. Yo, check it. What, bro? What? Where, what? Them things. It's just rockets, isn't it? I say so far, I'm not feeling it too much. But, you know, it's alright. I'll try and complete the rest of the season and see how full then. It's not my feelings like 10 episodes in the first season or something like that. 13 maybe. But yeah, I've watched the first couple episodes where they had to um, stop, uh, what, what do they call it, like the, the, the vampire leader coming back. It's like this one night every thousand years or something where the vampire leader comes back. And they stop that. It gets better as it goes along. I should hope so. <laughs> That's the thing about some series is though is that they take ages to start getting interesting. Ages. And you're like, oh mate, can I keep watching this still? But I mean so far it's not bad, it's not bad. I'll say it's not it's not gripped me just yet. But I'm willing to keep watching it at least for the rest of the season and see how I feel then. It could have been the magic of time, it could be. I think some things just come to you at a certain point in your life where they resonate just because of what they're doing and that point in your life and just how it all kind of comes together and it's like sometimes something could be like a really good show but it comes to you at the wrong time and that's such you don't necessarily appreciate it You know, so you don't necessarily appreciate when it comes to you, and then maybe you know, years later, whatever you watch it again, you think, "Man, that's actually really good." Other things come to you at a time where you're just more into it. And you watch it, you think, man, this is amazing. But then years later, you watch it again and think, 
the hell did I see in this? Yo, big up man like odds. What is this? Uh, do we listen to you watch the movie and give commentary? I mean, you could. <laughs> you could. Um, or if you have Netflix, you can watch it along with. Um, but yeah, if you've got Netflix or any other way you can watch Attack the Block, then yeah, you can watch along with. Um, if you don't, then yeah, we could just have a chat, have some fun. Either way, it's all good, man. Big up, man, like Oz coming through. How you doing, sir? Back when there wasn't really women who were uh, kick ass on the screens. Oh, this is true. This is true. There weren't as, as many back then. I mean, this is what, late 90s uh, Buffy started, right? I think it was like late 90s. So who did we, who was, who was, who was, who, which females were kicking ass in the, in that sort of time? Because they had Ripley from Alien, but that was like 80s. Who else was kicking ass on TV and movies? Well, I'm, I'm sure there was a few. But maybe not many. That's pretty cool, actually. I appreciate you saying so. Odds, oh, I'm doing pretty alright. Uh, can you complain, Daddy? How you doing, uh, Damn, That's a good question. Indeed, indeed. I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I just got. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I just picked up a new car uh, today to do some uh, cab work with. It's a rented car, but. Uh, fully electric so it's all efficient and smooth and whatnot so that's pretty cool just needs to get it listed and all that stuff but yeah I mean I'm sure there must be some um, sort of 90s I'm sure there was a few uh, women kicking ass around that time but yeah I guess there weren't that many really and I can't really think of too many right now at least not that I was watching on a regular basis does that have a fake engine sound so it doesn't feel weird um no I mean it's not super quiet it does still make some noise but yeah not not a noise like not a noise like an engine There's something kind of scary about something that could creep up new while going fast. <laughs> well, not quite like that. Well, not the one I've got at least anyway. I guess some of them can be super quiet if they make them that way, but yeah, this one's not not quiet. You would hear it. Police gave no consideration to the fact that the other people can still see the lady. Oof. Damage. Moses, 
they're gonna get it. Oh, they're gonna get it. I mean, I know what's gonna happen because I've seen this before still. <laughs> Man's on a moped. Pizza delivery moped. Hey man, you gotta do what you gotta do. Why would you go in there? Ah, this is before she was Doctor Who, so yeah, she wasn't too smart, I guess. I like to call it the fruit shoots of the motorbike world. <laughs> mm. You know, the thing about mopeds is that they are very, very practical for getting around town, getting around city, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never seen ever, but yeah. Used to ride motorcycles. Um, quite a lot and one time a bike needed some repair work and they gave me a moped to use as a loner and um And yeah, they gave me a moped uh, as a loner and and uh, it was um this awkward driving around because you get when you get used to the gears and having to do things automatically, it definitely takes me getting used to. But yeah. Oh, I can't mash. Oh. You wanna bring harm 
comes to me now. You want to murk me? You want to walk with me? Listen to me, cuz. I'm not even lying. If we was making it up, don't you think we'd make up something a bit better than aliens? Say that word one more time. I told you, bruv. On the roof, if you don't believe me. What? What's on the roof? One of them. Say it. <laughs> one of them big gorillas, wolf motherfuckers. Yo, hi, hi. There is something there, bruv. Uh, this film, man. This film. Oh, you don't want to go back there, mate. You don't want to go back there at all. But yeah, so this man looks like Chunks, though, still. Like, I know it's not Chunks, but he, he looks proper like Chunks. Oof. Anybody here ride motorbikes or mopeds? Or used to ride motorbikes or mopeds? Or bicycles. <laughs> We've got two worlds on a bicycle. <laughs> Anybody ride bicycles? close was that Oof. made it made it now don't put me behind the wheel of anything another good idea oh okay <laughs> No bikes, no cars, no nothing. All right, all right, cool, cool, cool. I do miss riding though. Like I haven't ridden a motorbike for a while. Is this? I do miss. It's kind of fun, but I think the next bike I get has to be something that. Let's me sit up straight on it. So how do you get a subtitle all synced up with your video? That's litty. Well, it's super complicated, really. What I do 
is a press play. <laughs> nah, it actually does it does it itself. So what it is is um, when Netflix, when you watch something on Netflix, it's sent with a anti piracy software code, whatever, right? That means that you know you can't stream it or you can't copy it. Ooh, right in the leg. Synced. Ooh, and there's, damn. Um, so it's all anti privacy stuff. So that as I'm streaming, I'm streaming my desktop, it shows nothing but the subtitles. So if I was to take this picture off, it's just a blank screen because the image is a. Uh, is copy protected so it doesn't stream um, but subtitles I guess don't have that same protection on, on Netflix so the subtitles show and all I did was create an image out of it with a box for the subtitles to see through so yeah that's, that's pretty much it <laughs> I'm a tech wizard I know <laughs> uh, never have but I'll do it uh, to say I've done it uh, before. Uh, my folks did motorcycles a couple of times way back in the day. Oh yeah, and the motorcycles are cool. My, my parents were against me uh, getting a motor. My, my brother, my two, little, myself, and my two little brothers uh, both have all have motorcycle licenses. Um, but yeah, no, my, my my parents weren't in favour of it. <laughs> they weren't in favour of it, but um. Just kind of did it anyway. But yeah, definitely recommended. Oh yeah, I knew about that uh, slightly, but the addition of the image threw me. <laughs> well, what can I say? What can I say? I'm a genius. Please, can you say please? Bit rude, man. Yeah, that's all it is. There are actually ways you can get around the copy protection on Netflix. I'm just saying there are there are ways that I'm aware of that you could get around the copy protection. It's not even that difficult, to be honest with you. But I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna do that. That's not cool, man. It's not cool. I'm just saying, it's not difficult to get around a crop protection. Be right back. All right, see you in a bit, Brax. Even if it is an alien invasion, they're four foot high, they're blind, and they got kicked to death by a group of kids. We got nothing to worry about. Huh? <laughs> yeah, you say that now. Nothing to worry about, huh? Really? Really? I ain't too sure about that, homie. Sure. I've got nice boxes on. 
And we killed him fine first today. Tell me if these have it. Run. Oh, puss! How about this? Puss, 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 puss! It's one of you minor arteries. You might have a fracture. You need to get this treated before you lose too much blood. I can't do it. I don't have the equipment or the skill. I've only just graduated. And I missed the class on alien bite wounds. Pass me that cushion. I said, pass me that cushion. Yeah, these kids ain't got no manners, fam. Oh, don't you get on me? I've seen you, man, before, you know. You've been a couple of months. Mm. Nice place you got. Thanks. Thinking of moving. Sure. Want it? Look like the area. Hey, what do you mean you don't like the area? What's wrong with the area? Well, it's been a couple of months and got mugged and now getting chased by aliens. So, yeah, I think that's what's wrong with the area. Yes, um, Rainbow Six, Tango neutralized. Well, not just Rainbow Six, I guess, but you know, those type of games. Well, you, your choice is either take your chances with the aliens or hang with the kids that mugged you earlier today. I'm coming with you. After what you put me through tonight, it's the least you can do. No way, man. She's bare annoying. Make her leave. Let us get the murder. Finish, man. Why are you acting like such a prick for? I need the nurse. Do you want me to die? So you can't stand around here arguing. You need to roll. Now. My name's Sam. Jerome. First. No, man. Dennis. You're Moses, right? Gonna need a weapon. You're gonna need a weapon. Where's your toll? Well, fuck ain't toll. This fuck ain't toll. Things cool down. Tell him to cool down. Oh, forget it, bro. Get the car. Get in the car. Now. Mmm, 
put men under manners, innit? Seatbelts are on because boy, man's driving crazy still. And it's little things like that I think just make this film just like brilliant. Just like there's little tiny little messages. Let's you know how it is for some folk. Some alien beer thingy last thing to worry about is seatbelts. True. When a dude's driving like that though, just saying. <laughs> just saying. on in my car always That's at the uh, 
I said an eight. For real? That part, I believe. That true. You robbed that woman. Yeah, but afterwards, she fixed up my leg and you saved her from the monsters, so... Yeah, we're at Frozen G. We're heroes, isn't it? Heroes. Five of you and a knife against one woman. Fuck off. Wrong. Yeah, it's that age where it's like it's all about big earrings and everything. If Blade was to get over with quick, he was as scared as you. Blade? Shh, you're such a waste. Why's it always trouble with you? Why's it always someone getting robbed or beaten up or someone getting arrested? Listen, we can't deal with this on our own. We have to call the police. You can trust me. I'll tell them what we really have. Frozen Gamer. How you doing, man? They'll arrest them. It's a matter of two police officers. Okay, we get uh, eaten because you're too busy messing with me. <laughs> hey, safety first. Is it guns? Is it monsters to get us? <laughs> I told you not to do that. Excuse me, but what is that? It found them. Oh, my face! Yeah. Yeah, I'll be in the car like, everybody put your seatbelts on, please. And you'd be like, well, there's aliens coming to get us. And they'd be like, jump in the car and everything. Or the aliens outside, jump in the car and rock in the car. And be like, nope, I'm not moving till everybody puts their seatbelts on, actually. Then I'll turn the engine off and wait till everybody puts their seatbelts on. <laughs> then we'll start driving. Assuming we're not eating alive by that point. I'm leaving you behind then. <laughs> well, I guess guess the choices are either leave the car and face the aliens on your own <laughs> or stay in the car, put your seatbelt on and everybody stays safe. <laughs> I'm just saying. We all make choices and choices have consequences. Give him up like that, you know. Yo, big up FG, appreciate that. One seventy nine, Metroid Dread in eleven days. I oh, appreciate that, Frozen Gamer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, Metroid Dread out soon. I don't know if I'll be able to escort on day one, but hopefully I'll be able to get it not too long afterwards because I do want to play that game. Metroid Dread looks pretty sick. Thank you, thank you, FG. Big up for that. If you get attacked in the car, you're going to be eaten because of the seatbelts. 
Well, they'd have to get in the car first. And I guess, to be honest, they probably could get through the car easy enough. I mean, I, I, I imagine aliens can probably break through the car. they probably break through the window. So, so I guess either way, everybody's dead, really. <laughs> Either stay in the car, and we get killed in the car, or leave the car, and you get killed outside the car. Either way, we're all dead. Okay, so I guess that's, the, that's, the, that's what's happening. But still, I ain't driving that seatbelt. Rule number one, everybody puts their seatbelts on. If you're gonna die, I guess we're gonna die. We have seatbelts on. <laughs> Wyndham Tower. Guess that proves seat best don't always save lives. <laughs> So I guess it's one of these things then, it's like, okay, let's say we're all in a car and there's aliens outside, aliens are coming to get us, right? And I'm like, nope, we're not driving that seatbelts. And nobody wants to put their seatbelts on. And then the aliens break through the car and kill us all. Or maybe everybody does put their seatbelts on, but while they're putting their seatbelts on, the aliens break through the car and kill us all, right? Or you could be like, no, 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 I'm not putting a seatbelt on, I'll leave the car and they get killed outside. Or we could drive without putting seatbelts on, and because there's so many aliens, we end up crashing and dying. <laughs> I'm just saying, I feel like in that situation, we're also dead anyway. What's wrong's weed room? <laughs> well. Rather die in a crash than get eaten. What happens if you crash and the crash doesn't kill you right away, just severely injures you, and then you get eaten? <laughs> Then you're in pain, and then you get eaten alive while in pain, and so you're just in more pain. Mm. 
We're all dying tonight. Oh, 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 excuse me. I want to do. So I guess what it comes down to really, how would you rather die in a crash out in the streets or Wrapped in a car while trying to put your seatbelt on. I don't know. I don't know. End results the same, but I guess some choices are less painful than others. Room for the kid with the sword. You talking about this kid, Jerome, with the uh, glasses on? That's a bet. Cause uh, yeah, that that kid. Um, I want the big sword. Is, okay, you trying to catch a glimpse of him? I probably probably know which one you're talking about. Ooh. Yeah, Jerome's not going home. Uh, did you watch AJ? I don't see the fight. No, I saw the results. Um, I haven't seen any clips or highlights or anything, so I don't know exactly what happened. I know it, how it ended, though. I know the results of how it ended. Oh, wait, this kid. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Moses, Moses. Yeah, 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 yeah. set proves too much for AJ yeah I mean from what I saw of it AJ lost on points um I've never heard of this other guy before so I don't I, don't, I can't I don't want to I don't I don't, I don't want to speak too much man but you say he wasn't even a proper heavyweight we just they plucked him out of nowhere then Third heavyweight fight, really? She. Really. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of talk about AJ and um Tyson Fury. I don't think anybody does anybody care for that anymore. Oof, yeesh. I think we could all agree. Don't nobody want to go out that way. I don't think nobody wants to get killed that way. That that's ugh. That was a cruiserweight, not anymore. Mm. Oh. 
doing with Skims. That was too good for him. He had that coming though. Oh yeah, yeah, you can't, I mean. Bad way to go out, but but he kind of um, brought it on himself really, isn't he? Well, to some degree. But yeah. I don't know if Tyson's too good for um AJ still, but I think like the interest in that fight is probably diminished now. Yeah, got a point there, fam. Edge is a mobile. Uh, he needs to be lying on his feet. I'd have to take your word for it on that one because like I said, I don't actually see the fight, so I don't know exactly how it went down. But I mean, AJ can box. He just maybe not as well as he needs to. It's an eco hormone that triggers a social response. No room for macho crap in this situation. Ain't, ain't that the truth? Need to put your egos aside and work together. Oh, could he found, wasn't he found guilty before? He's gone, I don't know how long. Damn, man. I thought he was found guilty before. Finally, him with the cool kids. <laughs> for other charges, uh, he didn't have. Oh, okay. So he's got kills for other stuff. Right, 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 right. Everyone had that scent on them. So if they follow the smell on that, then maybe I can lead them. Yeah, have to do all that. We'd have to do none of that. Somewhere I can blow them up. Oh, but can he never get out? Yeah, R. Kelly's a wrong one, man. Damn. I can remember, I think it was maybe about 1991 or two, early 90s anyway, going to HMV in Oxford Street to buy R. Kelly's single on CD, Vibe. It was the very first CD that I ever bought. R. Kelly's vibe back in 91, 92, whenever it came out. I went to HMV in Oxford Street. I remember getting a bus into town to get R. Kelly's vibe, the single on CD. But yeah, he was a wrong one, man. I used to listen to his music, I believe I can get away. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I mean, he has some good songs, man. Props 
amusement wreck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Finally got their respect. <laughs> but yeah, it's um you know, he had a lot of good songs out, man, for over a long period of time and he was a very popular, talented musician for a long time. I mean, he launched Arlia's career, that album that he did with Arlia. Um Um, AJ Number Number is a phenomenal album and it's just a, such a shame that it's I mean I've listened to that album a few times recently and it's still a, it's still a great album by even even by even today but it's just such a shame that what it's now surrounded by because you can't listen to, it's hard to listen to that album and not I mean you can still appreciate the album for how good it is and how amazing the Leah Singer was but it's just everything surrounding what that did and what happened, and it's. Mm. Mm. Yes, I do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> he wanted to touch something else. Mm. He wants to touch a bit too much. He was still listening to Ian Watkins. It's difficult when art is connected to someone evil. Ian Watkins, wasn't he the guy from... Ah, uh, he was a guy from, uh, what is it called? Uh, it was a Welsh band, I think, wasn't it? But he he did some like pedophil pedophilia stuff like years back. Am I thinking of somebody else? Maybe. I mean, I'll say that, I mean, I haven't listened to much R. Kelly over the years. Like, apart from the fact that I bought that single, I wouldn't say that I was a big R. Kelly fan. Like, um, just in general, I mean, I like some of his songs, but I was never really into him in any real big way. So not listening to R. Kelly music wasn't exactly... You know, it's not, it's not, I'm not exactly boycotting R. Kelly well when I wasn't really listening to a whole lot anyway, right? But, yeah, no, Alia was, was an amazing talent. And that album, her first album that he produced, that R. Kelly produced and had a lot to do with. It's like, I mean, you can still listen to the album, still appreciate Alia as just an, this amazing singer that had some incredible songs that came out in like the mid-90s and... But yeah, it's just because of what's connected to it. It's just, ugh. But Aaliyah's on streaming platforms now, for those who might not know. For the longest time, only AJ Nothing But a Number was available on streaming platforms, but recently her last two albums, um, One in a Million and Aaliyah, or the Red Album, as her fans call it, They are now finally available to stream on your platforms of choice. And it's where we get a, clip, a glimpse of how Moses lives and what he's going through on a daily. Um, uh, he was, yeah, she was groomed by him, wasn't she? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot of stories, a lot of rumors. So it's hard to know what exactly what's true, but what seems to be true is that, yeah, he pretty much groomed 
her from a young age. Um, married her when she was like 14 or 15. Um, that seems to be what we know is true uh, in regards to R. Kelly and R. Leah. So maybe like, I mean, it's hard to know whether how 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 far it went with her, but yeah, it, at least we we do know it went far with some other girls, because that's that's been shown, that's been proven. Sweaty hands on the lighter. the British flag. Saved the day. But the police won't believe him. Stop resisting. Went to that. I thought for a sec he was a gunner. <laughs> Close though, wasn't it? But then, well, I won't say nothing. To, let, me, let me not say nothing. Let me not say nothing. Let me not say nothing. but didn't quite uh
didn't quite get out of it. But those who know, know. Yeah, there we go. And that was attack the block. So what y'all think of it for those who were watching it for the first time? Jodie Whittaker. Well, I call it Foster, isn't it? My bad. Jodie Whittaker. Jodie Whittaker, Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster is somebody else. Jodie Foster is an uh, American actress. It's a cool film. Nice. You switch over to this screen. So you, there we go. But yeah, and no, I really like that film. I really like that film. I've seen it. Uh, it's probably like the fourth or fifth time I think I've seen it in total. I can't remember the first time I watched it, but it was a while back. And yeah, and no, I just think it's so multi-layered. You know, like it's uh, humorous. Um, it's got sci-fi elements to it, but then you know it's also like quite deep in, in, in its approach and how it kind of handles the issues and especially when it's like you know set I mean I, I didn't grow up on a, on a block like that but I grew up in a place where you know that sort of thing was very much around me all, all the time so it's kind of like you know you see that lifestyle and you see how people are treated and stuff like that and then so yeah, you could imagine something like this where if there was an alien invasion and you know, it was like the the young kids that ended up saving the day, but then they'll probably get end up getting blamed for all the carnage as well. So, you know, I can imagine that that sort of thing happening. So it was kinda like, yeah, it's it, it is relatable on, on, on that sort of level. Um to well not relatable, you know, understandable. Well relate I'm sure it's relatable to somebody, but yeah. They don't believe the alien story yet BLM to deal with him, eh, for real. <laughs> they need some backup. But yeah, the first time I watched it though, and you know, they have that bit where they go to the lady, can you confirm it was them? I was kind of thinking, oh, she's gonna point them out as a criminal, isn't she? She's gonna she's gonna abandon them, isn't she? And it's one of these things where it's like, it, had she said, yeah, they're the ones that mugged me. Had, had she said that, it's like, I get it. Because they did mug her and that is still a crime. And, you know, it shouldn't really go scot-free. But then it's like, after everything that happened as well, it just oof, becomes, it, it comes to that gray area. Do you still mention it or do you? say like okay you know them a better now you understand why they do what they do and they did help protect you and save your life so oof but yeah and I'm glad like she was like no they they they're my neighbors I know them they protected me I glad she, they put that first but even still the police are another issue <laughs> the police are another issue a whole nother issue But yeah, that film was directed by um, Joe Cornish, who used to do a TV show back in the day with him and another guy. I can't remember the name right now, but I used to watch a little bit of it where they had like toys from like loads of toys. I like, used like things like Star Wars toys and stuff like that, and they would make the toys talk. And it, and not like animation, but they would like be moving the toys themselves. It was on like Channel 4 or something like that, I think. But it was like way, way, way back in the day. This is way, way, way back in the day. Let me see if I can find it still. Was it Takeover TV? Was that it? No, I don't think this was Takeover TV. Or maybe I think it was somebody else. 
Maybe it wasn't Joe Cornish. Maybe I think of somebody else. Yeah, Adam, wait, Adam and Joe. Yeah, I think that was it, actually. Yeah, Adam and Joe, but uh, I don't I don't know. Maybe this isn't it. I'm sure it was Adam and Joe, but they, I guess, oh, I can't remember. It was a long ass time ago. That's for damn sure. To be fair though, anyone in council states are pretty much looked down. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, no, it's um It's a thing. Oh wait. Apparently there's an attack to block two coming. It doesn't say when, but it looks like it's in pre-production according to the movie database. Written and directed by Joe Cornish, same guy, starring John Boyega. He's the only one that's uh, listed. There's no other actors listed on it, so uh, I guess they're in very, very early days of it. But yeah, man, that's a shame about the uh, accounts. It's like, um, there was one, well, more than one in London, <laughs> but one in particular in oh shepherd's bush area not shepherd's bush what am i talking about oh what am i talking about not shepherd's bush um ah uh, can't remember what it's called anymore but anyway um but yeah one bomb part of london it's called it was called grenfell it was on the news quite a bit it was quite big news actually when it happened but that, that burns down and a big part of the reason um, was that, you know, it just wasn't really well maintained. And apparently what was happening is that they never really did any like, sort of fireproofing, all that kind of stuff. All they, all they really did was make the outside look good. So like, you know, the rich people from across could have something pretty to look at because they didn't like look at some disgusting building. So they made the outside look good for the rich people, but they never actually done anything on the inside. So all the problems and everything that was still there. So when the spark happened that caused a fire, it spread a lot quicker and a lot further than it might it would have had, you know, they maintained it properly. But yeah, that's that's a thing. You know, that's a thing. Like they're they're so underfunded because like, you know, people don't care, like governments don't care, councils don't care, councils just take money and pump it into other things. You know, the corruption that goes on that that you might not hear about it's crazy and then something like this happens and then it puts it to this it brings it to the spotlight brings it to the forefront where yeah these things are going on now they could uh, now they start investing in you know getting a uh you know fireproofing and, and things like that in, in, in council estates now they start doing it in, in places things that should have been done long before but it takes a massive fire that's on the news around the world for them to finally do something about it, you know, all those, all those people who lost their lives, lost their homes, you know, for them to finally do something about it. It's the world we live in. Council care though, when it comes to the rent, <laughs> indeed. When it when they want their money, when it's time to get their money, best pay up. They take ages when it comes to fixing things. But yeah, when they when it comes to the money, they get their money. They get their money. All of their money. Hmm. The sad thing is, is that the council estates or council housing for a lot of people is pretty much the only viable option when it comes to housing because the private market um, especially in, in London, you know, it's so expensive. It's so expensive. And even some of these schemes that they have that are supposed to help people um, get houses, you know, even even some of those, it's like, bro, they're, they're expensive, man. 
and in some cases like even if you could afford the house like affords the monthly mortgage and everything like even if you could afford it it still might not give you the mortgage to get the house just because of some bogus reason that don't make no sense to nobody you know so it's just crazy man it's crazy let's wait three weeks to fix my boiler flipping out man And that's like people who, like, you know, imagine somebody who is maybe elderly or maybe somebody who has, like, say, poorer health. And three weeks could be life or death, you know, especially like when the winter comes around and you're trying to get them heating in. Three weeks could be life or death, you know. But their men don't care for them. Their men don't care. I have a booking update. I did not get booked. <laughs> okay. Oh, well. Oh, well. Maybe next time. It's all good. It's all good. Council care about money, and that's it. For real, for real. For real, for real. You know? But it's just sad, man. It's just sad that we've come to this. You know, I was just thinking like the other day, it's like, you know, they're talking about the national insurance going up next year. Was it next year or whenever it's going up? Yeah, it's next year. It's next year it's going up by one point whatever percent. Because, you know, they've got to pay for like healthcare and all this sort of stuff, right? Like, okay, okay, okay. But then it's like, wait a minute. Wait just a minute. What happened to that three point, was it 3.5 billion a year that we're given to the EU that we don't have to give to the EU anymore? You know, like now that now that now that we're all finally officially out of the EU, what happened to that 3.5 billion? You know, what happened to that? How come we <laughs> that's your shirts is going up when there's literally an extra 3.5 billion, maybe even more than 3.5 billion actually? I might be more than that, more than that, because um, I, I guess like the actual figure theories, but at least, at least three point five billion pounds. They've got a spare three point five billion pounds lying around, and now they want to put up national insurance. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, nah, something don't quite add up here. Something don't quite add up here. But it doesn't even surprise me because that whole thing about the furlough scheme and the self-employed uh, uh, help scheme, it as soon as they announced it, I was like, as soon as they announced, it, I was like, you know, it, it, that's not a help. That's they're not helping us out. It's a loan. I knew that. I knew it was a loan. They, they're going to get their money back somehow. And this is how they're doing it by raising it in, in national insurance. I don't vote. Leave. Didn't fall for their crap. <laughs> for real. I did not vote leave either. But uh, I guess 51% of the of the nation did. And here we are. I was like, alright, so we're leaving the EU. We got... What's, what's happened? We, we don't have HGV drivers because... <laughs> They, had to, they, they couldn't get what work visas or whatever, so they all had to go back to different countries. We don't know, hey, there's a shortage of HGV drivers. A shortage of petrol, so like, um, everyone's panic buying petrol right now. And now our national insurance is going up to pay for something that really should have already been paid for because we don't have to get, uh, pay for the EU anymore. So like, but you're putting up the national insurance. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This doesn't quite add up. We are getting screwed, man, bruh. And the thing is, it's the poor people that get screwed. Like, rich people don't care. Like, they're fine. You know, rich people are fine. I mean, a, a little bit of an increase for a rich person on the national insurance is not a big deal. Like, a 1.5%. I mean, it's, 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 it's maybe, at most, like a minor inconvenience. You know what I mean? It's, but it's not a big deal. But for people who are 
you know, let's say you're earning, I don't know, let's say 25,000 a year or less. That's where you'd feel it, man. Those those are guys who are going to feel it. If you're 25,000 a year or less, and you will feel it. People on UC now losing 20 quid a week as everything is going up. What's UC? I don't know if I know that term actually. What's UC? You see what I see? Oh, universal credit. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Universal credit. Yeah, I seize it. I seize it. I seize it. Universal Credit is a United Kingdom social security payment. It is replacing and combining six benefits for working age people who have a low household income, income-based employment and support allowance, income-based job seekers allowance and income support, child tax credit and working tax credit and housing benefits, contribution-based job seekers allowance and contribution-based employment and support allowance have been replaced with new style versions and are not affected by universal credit okay i knows what that is well i know a little bit about it i guess i don't know fully about it but yeah i did look into universal credit a little bit at the beginning of the uh, pandemic actually um when the money started dropping down i was considering applying for it and in the end i didn't um i did try applying for like the self assess self-employed one though but they told me i wasn't uh, uh eligible for that so i didn't get that from the government in the end uh working people claim it not just yeah because i think it's like um if 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 you're either not working or if you're working but your income is low below a certain amount i can't remember what the amount was but yeah if your income if you're working but your income's below a certain amount you can still claim it um but yeah i was considering it for a while in the end i can't remember i, I remember decided against it. i can't remember the reason why i decided against it though i probably just couldn't be bothered in the end i think after i got turned down for the self-employed one i just want to screw i can't be bothered <laughs> maybe not the best reason to be uh turning down money but hey i'm a stubborn get sometimes to be honest with you to be honest. Now, yeah, I did apply for the self-employed uh, help scheme and yeah, they turned me down. I said, I don't, I'm not eligible for that. I said, I am not eligible for that. I ain't get no help. I ain't got no help. So good though, so good. Because apparently what I'm, uh, heard, now I heard the other day actually, Anybody who was on a furlough scheme or anybody who applied for a self-employed help scheme may be now turned down for mortgages because they'll look on that as a sign of bad credit or something like that, which is ridiculous, by the way. Ridiculous. Like, they're not going to consider the fact that people were just literally in a pandemic. It's no, no fault of their own that, you know, everybody's income was dropping down. And they're going to say, oh, if you apply for any kind of help from the government, we're going to think we're going to take that as you having bad credit and not going to give you a mortgage. That's ridiculous. I mean, it did make me glad that I didn't apply for it. I didn't get it in the end because I'm like, OK, so I actually do want to try and get a mortgage at some point. But even still, just just because it didn't affect me, don't mean it's OK. It's ridiculous still. Do you know who I've heard of Corpse Husband? I don't know much about him. Um, he is a YouTuber, I think, and I think he's, uh, did, didn't he do like a song with Drake or something like that? Or, I heard he was in a rap, no, no, MGK. I think he did a song with MGK, I heard, but, yeah, I mean, I know of him, I don't really know, I don't follow him that, that closely, so, I, I, I don't know. But yeah, I know the name, he's one of the, um, they are called VTubers, V, uh, v, VTubers, Virtual Tubers, where they have like an, 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 an anime, no, an avatar. Uh, we get it to to top up the other half's earnings. Uh, I didn't get any of this month because he got a four hundred pound bonus. Uh, out of that bonus, he got one hundred and fifty, so I lost five hundred that month. Uh, he did a face. Oh, face review. Okay, 
with MTK. <laughs> the MTK is always in trouble these days. I heard he got into a fight with a fan recently as well. So he's like, bruh, man needs to uh, chill. But yeah, that's one of the things about the benefit system is that it actually penalizes people for doing the right thing. Like if you earn above a certain amount, they'll stop your benefits, right? But then it's like you might not necessarily earn enough over that amount so for it to actually warrant you know anything so i know i know people who've done this who have hid their earnings um because they 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 either hide their earnings or they were purposefully turned down overtime if they're offered overtime because what they'll earn would put them above the amount they'll uh, put them above the threshold to receive benefits but they wouldn't earn enough for it, to, for it to actually get more money. They'll end up with less because when the tax is coming in, where a week when it might have their pay plus maybe, I don't know, 300 pounds, whatever they're getting, right? Because they'll maybe earn a little bit more. They won't get the uh, extra benefits, but they'll get taxed more on the amount they earn. So they actually end up with less money. So yeah, it, it kind of encourages people to cheat the system, you know, rather than having like a say a, a sliding scale system where it's like you own a this amount and you get this amount of this you get that amount out you get this they just cut it off so it encourages people especially if you're not really earning enough above that amount to be like you know what let me just um especially people who do like the cash in the hand stuff if you do like a cash in the hand payments it's like you know let me just um not register that bit or uh yeah, just don't apply for the overtime when it gets offered or... I seized that, man. I seized that. Uh, he is ill, making his voice deeper than usual. Oh, still making his voice deeper than usual. Okay. I've never watched any of his videos. I don't know what he does. I just heard the name because I guess he's popular and people talk about him. Let's see if we can find a face reveal for... Uh... So he's a musician, I guess, then, by the looks of it. Or, I don't know. He does music, at least, whether he's a musician or not, I don't know. Let's see, Corpse Husband, face reveal. Look at what this dude looks like. Corpse husband accidentally accidental face reveal leaked. That was about 18 hours ago. Alright. Plays games. Out of every pound you earn, they take off 75p. Ooh, I see, I see. Uh, these women have high expectations. That he is a hot guy because of his voice. I am back. Braxton's back. Big up, Braxton. Yeah, people cheat it constantly. Uh, one of the worst is uh, playing crazy for someone to help or enable them to get certain benefits. Mm. But the way the system works, it kind of encourages it a little bit. Simple fans went to see MGK just to boo him. <laughs> Why is he picking fights with Slipknot though? With well, with um, uh, Corey Taylor. Corpse husband face reveal just got leaked. Before I get into this, I just want to say I just woke up, so I might sound like tired or you know angry, but yeah, you have as a credit too. Okay. Now many people don't know how it was leaked. People are saying that his iCloud was leaked and he was docs on some website, but no one truly really knows. I don't know if this is real, but if it is, I've mostly I seen. I don't really think the best thing. Mostly to do women do it. Just saying. <laughs> pictures like this. I mean, for one, if this is him. This is kind of messed up. Yeah. I think over here it's just a mix. Guys, girls. It's not him. You guys are spreading random pictures of random people around. Without further ado, let me show you guys pictures. So this is Corpse Husband's face, apparently. What y'all think? 
I mean, I've never watched any of his videos, so I, 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 I guess I don't feel no way about it, but... It's a person. You guys do the same stuff in Dream. Harass the random guy. I can't believe you guys thought Corpse was some hot guy. Why do you think he was hiding his face? Now, I know y'all are coming online to make fun of Corpse's alleged appearance after years of spreading hate, bullying, and body positivity. Y'all are the ugly ones on the inside. Now, I know this is another short video, but I want to know your guys' thoughts on this. Comment down below. You need slip night and Corey alone. Mm. Listen to his voice. Okay. Don't know who he is. Yeah. I've just heard his name. I ain't know much about him. I ain't know much about him. But okay. Apparently that's what he looks like. I mean, whatever. Whatever. People can look like what they look like. <laughs> it's all good. 101 videos and he's got 7.58 million subscribers. Bruh. He's doing something right. I have way more videos than that on my channel. <laughs> Where's my old 7.58 million subscribers? Shit. He must be doing something right. Man's only posted 101 videos and he's got 7.58 million subscribers. And his last video was like five months ago. Like, bruh. He's doing something right. Or something wrong. Just saying. I'm just saying. Alright, let's listen to his voice. Let's see if we can find what his voice sounds like. Oi, I recently released a song with Machine Gun Kelly called Daywalker. You can find the music video in the description of this video. I'll well, immediately I'll say that um, it's probably not his real voice. Um, I mean, it could be. No, nothing's, nothing, nothing impossible. But I doubt that's his real voice. It sounds like he's using some kind of voice um, software device to change his voice slightly. So, yeah. I, I doubt that's his real voice. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. But I doubt it. I have no dog in a fire. I don't particularly care if that's a real voice or not. But I'm just saying, that's probably not his real voice. But hey. I mean, I'm just saying, the guy who... Uh, in fact, yeah, you just said a moment ago, actually, that he's disguised the voice. He, he's disguising his voice anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. Corpse husband disguises his also, voice. According to YouTube statistics, 67% of people watching me. me out here catching feelings for corpse. Oh, oh gosh. Couldn't be Only me. now I've been. Yeah. Oh, that interesting. Corpse husband, to be honest with you. I'm sure he's a nice enough fella, but hey. So good. So good. It's so good. Oof. But yeah, man. I need, where's my 7.58 million subscribers, though? Like. I'm trying to, uh, I, I've posted, I don't even know how many videos I've posted on this channel. I think I've posted, I think it's more than a thousand at this point, to be honest with you. Like, I'm not even, let me see if I can find that real quick. How many videos have I posted on this channel? Yeah, 1,211 videos I've posted on this channel. Hey, where's my 7.85 million subscribers? What's going on? <laughs> what is going on? So I guess I learned today that people would rather watch somebody disguise their voice and hide their face. <laughs> well, that's YouTube. People, are, people like fake, I guess. What can I say? It's just, uh, it just is what it is. People like fake. People like, uh, I guess, I guess there's a whole thing about you could just imagine what he really looks like. Now that goes on, but hey, so good. Big up Quartz husband. If I started a YouTube and got that many, I would quit. Ooh, seven point five eight million subscribers. Damn. Yeah, I'm trying to get I'm trying to get that YouTube money, man. I'm trying to get that PewDiePie money. I'm trying to get 
try and get on one of those lists that talk about the richest YouTubers. I want to be. I want to be at the top of that list. Actually, I don't know. Do I want to be on that list? I mean, here's the thing. What I'd say, actually. I mean, of course, um, I, I would like to have more money. Like, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend I wouldn't like to have more money. I think most people would like to have more money. And to be able to do something like YouTube and earn a good amount of money from it. Yeah, of course I'd like that. But I think in real talk though, like I would say that I I struggle with making that a priority. Because I think anytime you make money when it comes to say expressive or creative uh, ventures... Anytime you make money the priority, your decisions are based on you know what's popular, what are people more likely to watch, what what's you know what's going to make you the most money, right? That's how your decision process goes when that's the priority, and that's fine if that's you know what you want to do, but it means fundamentally that your creativity and your expression suffers because unless you happen to be that rare unicorn where the things that you are putting out, the things that you creatively want to do and the things how, the way you want to express yourself just so happens to be something that is super popular, makes lots of money, unless you happen to be that rare unicorn, which does happen, but you know, not very often. Most of the time you have to choose between doing what you feel is right, like what you feel it best uh, represents yourself, what you feel best uh, expresses yourself, what showcases your creativity. You know, you're choosing between that and choosing between what's popular, you know, and what makes you the most, uh, gets you the most views and stuff like that. It's rare those two are the same thing. Most of the time you have to choose between. And for me, I feel like if I was to do the whole, you know, popular stuff, I, you know, you could do that. But it's draining, you know, it's draining trying to keep up with all the popular trends and all the cool things and all the, all the latest news and the latest this and the latest that and having to have like some kind of opinion on everything that is happening to try and keep up with this and you get yourself and I, you've seen this happen to people and I've, and I've kind of been there myself a little bit as well you kind of get yourself into a position where you feel like you can't stop because the moment you stop you fall off you know the moment you stop and take a break it's like you know you people people because people are watching you to get all the latest things and it's at the moment you can't do that, it's an issue, you know? I, 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 I don't wanna be in that position where you just have to keep going no matter what. Because this is draining, you know? It's draining. I like that I can just kind of do what I need to do. And if I feel I need to do something else, I can do that, you know? And it, it just doesn't make me the big bucks, unfortunately. But I mean, what's money if you're miserable, right? So. You know what I mean? So, I, I, I mean, yeah, of course I'd like to have more money. Of course I'd like to have more everything and more this and more that and more subscribers and everything else. Of course I'd like that, but I feel like I can't do that at the expense of my sanity. Otherwise, it means nothing, you know? What's the point of having all that money just to spend it all on therapy? <laughs> yeah, what would be the point? What would be the point? So, um, yeah. But you know, like I, but you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not opposed to the idea of jumping on a, on a trending topic every now and then. I'm not, I'm not opposed to the idea of doing that, but all the time and trying to do all, all the things that are popular. Nah, it's, it's, it's a bit much for me. Every now and then, sure. But for the most part, I'm just trying to be me. I'm just trying to be me. Do you think it would change you though? Um, I mean, I'd like to think not. At least, I mean, of course, it's going to change if you if you're rich, right? Of course, some, things are going to change if you're rich. But I think, in on a core level, I'd like to think not. Um, I hope not, <laughs> right? Um, one of the things I believe, uh, from a religious point of view, is that nobody's given a burden more than they can handle. So perhaps. Perhaps the reason I don't have millions and millions is because that's a burden I can't handle. <laughs> so maybe as much as I think it won't change me, maybe it would. So um, yeah, maybe uh, just go be patient. Things come to you when uh, when uh, when it's when it when it's time when it when you when, when you're ready for it. 
least here on this channel it feels like we're friends more than followers i appreciate you sam yeah and i think that's kind of part of it as well as like you know when you watch some of the we go to some of the uh, bigger channels where in their live streams where they've got like uh you know 20 40 000 people watching and everybody's commenting at the same time and because of that you it's you know the the person they're, they're watching can't respond to every single comment now you, you understand that of course because of how popular it is but yeah that is something that that goes when when you get popular you kind of lose that kind of connection i think where it's like you know you can talk to people you could you know, learn a little bit about people, they can learn a little bit about you. You know, when, when you've got like 20, 30,000 people all typing the comments at the same time, you can't really do that. You know? So, yeah. I guess the choices are either, either, either get to know your audience better or get money. <laughs> Those are your choices. Get to know your audience better or get money. I don't know. Maybe there's a way they can we can do both. Maybe there's a way we can do both. And I guess uh, I have to try and find that way. Because, like I said, I would like to make some money from this. I ain't going to lie about that. I would like to make some money from this. It would be nice. It would be nice to be able to do this. And... You, and not have to do too many other things. Or at least not have to do them so much. It just it would be nice to be able to uh, have time where I could concentrate on putting out videos and writing and, and that kind of stuff. That would be nice. I'm not going to lie about that. It would be nice to have that. But yeah, I feel like it just can't be at the expense of being genuine, you know. Because then it's, it just means nothing. Like, What's the point of being famous if you aren't famous? You know what I mean? Like, if it's just like a version of you that isn't real or at least isn't representative of who you really are you know what I mean that's what's famous not you you know what I mean so it's like what would be the point of it it's like I heard something I can't remember where I heard it from I maybe read it somewhere on the internet I can't remember but it said something like um, I'd rather be hated for who I am than loved for who I'm not I'm like yeah I get that I get that As long as we don't lose the banter. Oh, we always got the banter. Man's got jokes in it. Hayes got jokes. That's the hashtag. Hayes got jokes. I'm trying to put as many funny videos as I can on my comedy channel. I've, I've been putting out quite a lot lately, actually. I think I put out a video almost every day for the past week. I think. I think I've missed one day. Um... Well, I know I missed one day. I, I maybe maybe missed two days. I'm pretty. I think I, I know I missed one day. But I feel like I put out one video on a comedy channel on the on the Instagram um, every day for the past week, maybe a little bit more, um, and a couple more videos that are on my TikTok that aren't on other platforms. So yeah, I've I've, I've, I've done all right. You know, I've done all right. I don't know if that could continue. I mean, hopefully it could continue, but we'll see. We'll see. But um. I think I've done all right, you know. I think I've done all right. And it, it could be like that sometimes with creativity. Sometimes you could just like get like a, a, a rush of ideas all coming to you and you can just like put out loads of stuff. And other times it's like drought. <laughs> it's drought. It's weeks. Days turn to weeks. Weeks turn to months. It's like, ah, oh, it's drought. It'd be like that, man. It'd be like that. But that's one of the reasons why I don't keep a schedule of when I'm putting out videos because I never want to be feel like I have to have something each and every week on each and every day and each and every time because then it's like I'm putting out stuff that I'm not happy with you know if I feel like I'm if I feel like the, that I have to put out video every single whatever and it gets to that point and I don't have any ideas coming through but I have to put a video out then I'm just putting out stuff that I don't really feel I want to put out you know I don't really feel is that good or even that funny and to be fair sometimes I mean this has happened by the way where I put out a video that I thought was not necessarily bad but maybe thought was eh, it's all right it's, it's, a, it's a cute little joke you know it's not really great it's just a decent it's okay it's not 
rip. It's not it's not laugh out loud funny, but it's alright, right? That's what I thought of it. I've put it out and sometimes those have gone on to be like some of the most uh, well-liked jokes that I've done, like some of the most popular jokes that people like the most, <laughs> the ones that I thought weren't that good. It is what it is. It is what it is, right? So I'm kind of conscious of the fact that just because I don't think a joke is that funny, that doesn't mean no one else would. But I do feel there needs to be a line or kind of a balance between okay maybe i don't think it's the greatest joke ever but i'm still happy to put it out and things that are just like nah this is just not what i want to do at all um for one reason or another there's certain things i feel like just because i thought of it doesn't mean i have to put it out and i feel there needs to be a line drawn somewhere that that way you're not just putting out stuff that doesn't really represent you or you know isn't really that good or you know i mean just for the sake of putting out something Nah, I, I, I don't want to get into that. So yeah, I'll try and pull out as much as I can, as often as I can. But I never want to put myself on a schedule that stays. I've got to do everything every single time, but this one and because nah, it's just it's unnecessary pressure. Appreciate that, Sam. Big up, big up, bro. Some people are too real to cope with fame. Mm, yeah, yeah. Kurt Cobain comes to mind. Still call you Kev. <laughs> yeah, that'd be one of those things where it's like you'd be going, Kev, Kev. And people be like, why, why is she calling you Kev? That's not your name. It's like, don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. But how come she gets to call you Kev and I don't? It's like, don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I don't want to call you Kev. You can't. You can't. You can't. <laughs> but yeah, man. Maybe it happen one day. But in the meantime, just keep doing what I'm doing. As best as I can do. As much as I can do. <laughs> Try that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I figured you know what? It was kind of one of these things where I was kind of looking at it like, because you were doing it for a while, as I call, right? And then when when he when Alan did it, it was I was kind of thinking to myself, you know what? Maybe I think I need to say something because there's a point where it's like I feel like if too many people stop calling me Kev, right? If I just let everybody stop calling me Kev, then it gets to a point where it's like people might just start thinking that is actually my name. And I thought, you know what? Let me just nip this in the bud right now. We're gonna call it. <laughs> Sam gets to call me Kev. Nobody else. Nobody else. He's going to nip this in the bud. No, 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 no. There's only one person gets to call me Kev. Only one person gets that privilege. Otherwise, it'd be like, people stop calling you Kev. And then before you know it, it's like, geez, that's not even my name. Like, why? <laughs> and it's like, people stop calling you Kev. And it's like, they don't even know why it even starts in the first place. And it's just they call you Kev because they think that's what your name is. And like, no, it's not. It's just. So, all right, you know what? Let's just, let's just nip this in the bud right now. Only one person gets the Kev privilege. <laughs> Only one person gets the Kev privilege. Everybody else? Nah. Nah. Nothing personal. Just, nah. We gotta, <laughs> we're gonna cement this right here. <laughs> oh, boy, excuse me. Schools and what civil play. So you get for calling me Karen. At one time, man, at one time. <laughs> That's so good. It's so good. It's all good. Kev. Kev Hayes. Ugh. But it is that time where one must say goodbye. I don't forget. It's like, um, what's that? What's that? What's that group called? Anonymous. We don't forgive. We don't forget. We are anonymous. I don't forgive. I don't forget. I am Sam Bobby. Do 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 do. Nah, so good. 
I appreciate you, Sam. Appreciate you coming through. Appreciate you uh, watching the live streams, watching the vids. Appreciate you uh, hitting the likes. Big up to Sam. Big up to everybody coming through, man. Big up to you and your crew. Whether you stayed for a little bit or stayed for a lot of bits, I appreciate you. Appreciate everybody who showed me any kind of support over the years. Some people are regular. Some people come every now and then. I said appreciate you guys, man. It's all good, man. It's all good. Uh, all that time you left me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 About that, huh? <laughs> Monkey, monkeying around. It's, it's because I, I because, uh, because I trust you to do a good job of raising him. That's why I trust you to do a good job of raising him. You know, it's because uh, it's because I know you do well. That's why. Yeah, that's why I did it. I, I was like, I was like, you know what? S Sam's got this. I don't need to be there. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> but yeah. Monkey, big up monkey as well. He wasn't here today, but so good. Appreciate you, monkey. Al wasn't here today, but so good. Appreciate you, Al. Big up Frozen Gamer, who's here a bit earlier. Braxton here a bit earlier. Big up everybody. Uh, Ken wasn't here today, but so I appreciate you, Ken. Yeah, that's so why he has a rifle obsessed. <laughs> well, I mean, there may be another reason for that, but that might that might involve um, therapy. <laughs> just saying, just saying. There's other things than guns that shoot things. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. When certain things are restricted, you might gravitate to other things that perform similar functions. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But let me not get too much into that right now. <laughs> but yeah. It is um <laughs> It is ten thirty one in the PMs. I'm gonna start wrapping up. Um, hopefully, uh, so it should be streaming again on Wednesday for the Overwatch Wednesday. So if you can join, that would be awesome. If not, I understand. Um, but yeah, try and post some videos in the meantime if I can. Check out my other channels as well. Um, but yeah, ask me off for now, guys. To all the talkers and the stalkers, to the stayers and the strayers, I appreciate you and all that you do. Thank you for keeping me company. Thank you for keeping it live. This is live, man. We're going to mess up my words. Um, but yeah, big up to everybody. Big up to you and your crew. Till whenever, if ever. Peace.